Welcome to the NXT Podcast, your home for weekly NXT reviews and insight. The beautiful part of NXT is that when one dream ends, another dream begins. Find all of your NXT news, recaps, and analysis right here. So with that being said, we only have one question for you. Are you ready? We thought so. Let's get the show started right now. All right, everyone. This is Memphis Mark coming to you from Mullet Manor. And we're here for the review of NXT on 11 29 and uh we're gonna start off this show a little different because hbk is involved that's right the heartbreak kid is brought together his own advisory crew uh he's trying to figure out uh through a process of elimination uh who is going to participate in the iron survival match a brand new match that he's come up with so let's see who he's put together. Let me see. He's brought together his old buddy Road Dog. And of course, even with Road Dog, since you can't have uh, Mr. Gun anymore, you got to have Xbox. And Xbox all cleaned up, looks good, even drinking coffee at the table. Uh, a great, uh, great, you know, to see him looking healthy and, and sounding good. And then you got Orlando Blaze and then Molly Holly. So uh, Molly Holly started off kind of young in the business. So, uh, you know, she's had her time there. So, bam, there's his his super crew. And uh, from there, uh, after we, you know, originally it just shows them shaking hands and everything. But you see who's in the room. And then from there, it goes to... A Roxanne Perez Indy Hartwell match, which they've been pushing Miss Hartwell good, and she's been looking good, looking a little Mike Tysius rolling out there, uh, just tearing it up. And uh, well, in this one, I was a little surprised uh, because they've been giving uh, Indy a big push in this, but Roxanne looked really good in this match. I have to say, though, I think the match was a little long. Um, they were doing something uh, with limited commercial breaks, and I was wondering if that had something to do with the way they handled uh, this match. But like I said, I thought it was a little too long, uh, you know, but there was some good, you know, Roxanne's got that short drop kick that she does really good. And, and uh, I mean, both girls were just tearing it up, or ladies were tearing it up, excuse me. <clears throat> but <clears throat> it surprised me because of the push that Miss Hartwell has been getting that in this match, Roxanne Perez gets the nod. She gets the win. And, um, and, and even towards the end of the match, uh, she's going to do her finishing move, uh, Pop Rocks. And uh, she can't really jump up on Indy because Indy is a larger, you know, taller woman. And uh, she has to kind of like hit her a few times and knock her down a little bit more to be able to jump up on the second attempt to uh, pull the move off uh, to get the win. But I'm just wondering, is this a wasted push on uh, Miss Hartwell? You know, is it uh, is it the beginning of, of, of a big push for Miss Perez? You know, uh, they do end up using Indy in a, in a, uh, a promo later. Well, not using her, but bringing her up. So I'm, I'm sure that they're going to keep her hot in a storyline. But, you know, I was just a little surprised in this particular match. But, um, you know, as I said, the match was what it was. All right. And we go straight into a promo <clears throat> with Mr. Chase U and Duke Hudson. And uh, Duke's explaining about uh, how he can stop a move, and, and he's going through how he can control his uh, his emotions. And, uh, but he has to explain that he couldn't do it this one time uh, last week when he went upside Mr. Chase's head. And uh, so he's got a bunch of signatures. He's going to try to get him back in the match. It's a pretty good little promo, but then Grayson Walla shows up. And he's going to spice it up a little bit, telling Mr. Chase, you're an idiot if you believe this stuff. And Mr. Chase is going to go down there and kick his butt. But uh, Duke says, I'll do it. So that sets up a match for later, guys. Oh, all right. From there you go. Dijak is back. The repackaging, the rebranding. 
And, um, you know, he comes in six, seven, has got the look, and he's uh, wielding his own brand of justice. And usually, I would say this is going to be a jabroni match uh, because uh, Dante Chin uh, does not look like he's up for the part. Uh, but I was surprised. Um, you know, you know. Of course, Dijak's going to get his uh, moves in, uh, but uh, Dante, you know, does a, uh, you know, he gets on the outside of of the ring and he does a, you know, like a, a, a shoulder tackle into Dijak into the side of the ring and gets a couple moves in there. He's got some good chops, a, a good kick. I mean, it's not your typical squash match. Uh, Mr. Chin looked good, although Booker D did say he's going to have to channel his best, uh, Bruce Lee. Uh, <laughs> and so Booker T on uh, commentary is a breath of fresh air. Uh, I like Booker T uh, with his ducky ducky and <clears throat> everything. So, of course, Die Jack's going to win this match. And, uh, but Dante... Uh, Chin does make a good uh, showing for himself. Uh, I was pleasantly surprised. Uh, And then from there, they do another promo where they go into the Diamond Mine Dojo. And who's in there but Miss Ivy? And uh, and she's got an unusual guest. Uh, It's OJD. OJD is there. And when the guys show up, Julius and Brutus, uh, they're a little shocked. And they want to know why he's in there. And um, they're planting a seed with uh, with Ivy, but uh, boy, she needs a little more mic work. Uh, she she is uh, uh, well, you just have to watch it and uh, see. Uh, but uh, JD's trying to explain to them the science on how much pressure, or he says kilograms, I believe it was, uh, uh, pressure it takes to uh, to crack a skull and all this and. How Veer and Sunga, um, you know, they're so big that, you know, you'd need three times as much. So, and he tells the guys, hey, you know, um, it's impossible. That's what he says. It's impossible. Which Julius comes back letting them know that, hey, they've been proven the impossible their whole careers and that they will not say the word impossible. It's not in their vocabulary. Uh, And uh, from there. From there, we got the first version of HBK's Super Panel. Uh, That's right. They get together and they talk about which guys. This is the guys' side. They do the girls later or the ladies later, uh, but uh, about for the Iron Survival match. And uh, they've, they're they just discussing all the who's who's, the JDs, the Vons, the, the Mellows, you know, Waller, everybody. Uh, you know, Axiom even comes in the mix. So, uh, they're, they're, you know, going over all the, uh, the, the, the big, you know, big guys and, uh, trying to determine now he's asking them to make a list. And I guess at this holiday season, I could say, and check it twice, (laughs) bad joke. Uh, but he is saying, give me your top five, each one of you and, uh, put pen to paper. You know, everybody had their suggestions. They had a good little uh, filler of time there, you know, uh, with the old guys getting a little light in there. But uh, that is uh, basic. And you know what? It's kind of the theme tonight. Uh, with this, you know, they brought back some of the older wrestlers. And, and really, in all of these matches, there's no big, big high-flying, you know, uh, high risk moves. This whole show had a basic feel, like a back to basics, uh, headlocks, arm bars, uh, heads into turnbuckles, uh, just a lot of the basic. Hey, let's go back to basics in this show, and and everybody do what you do, but do it very well. Uh, and you know that was I don't know that was my takeaway from the theme of the uh, the show today. Just get back to basics. Uh, but then, hey, 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 we've got the Duke Hudson Grayson Walla uh, match. And you know Grayson is bringing it. Uh, so, um, <laughs> you know, uh, in, in Chase U's uh, way of thinking, you don't cheat. You know, if a guy pulls hair, you don't pull hair. If a guy pokes you in the eye, you don't just retaliate by poking in the eye. 
Yeah, I know. All right, so uh, that's just their uh, that's their stick, uh, you know. So this match is a a mirror of that. Uh, one time Grayson's telling him, "Pull my hair, pull my hair," and he's pulling the crap out of his hair. And eventually Duke does, and there's some punches in there, and it it goes back and forth. But the whole theme of the match seems to be do it the right way. Well, you know what? In this match, it was not so much that. Now, Duke looks a little slow uh, in this, and I know some of that is by design, but Grayson looks uh, as as Mr. Walla always does. He sells. He's old school. He's new school. Uh, at one, and you know, but when, when Duke is like, after he's been down for a little while and he, he's get using the university to get his energy back, he kind of does a little ultimate warrior kind of hulking up kind of the way, uh, uh, the ultimate warrior did. I don't know if he was watching some old tapes or whatever, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. I mean, he, uh, uh, he, he almost kicks Thea at one time outside when he goes after a big kick on uh, Mr. Waller. And uh, it leads uh, when he goes back in after discussing it and uh, bringing up he can stop whenever he needs, which makes Mr. Chase wonder, hey, what do you mean by that? Uh, but he's, he almost kicks the, uh, uh, the wild woman at any point in time. Uh, and uh, when he goes back into the ring, uh, he is the recipient of uh, a recipient of, <laughs> I'm sorry, of a, of a stunner, uh, a number one stunner. And uh, which leads to a pin for Mr. Waller, which Mr. Waller, when he is leaving the ring, tells Mr. Chase, you know what I mean? He's a fake. All right. So, whew, uh, Mr. Waller always brings the excitement and uh, man, uh <laughs> I, I, he'll be in a WWE ring uh, on Mondays and uh, Fridays pretty soon. Now on Big Body Javi, um, you know, he's been coming out each week with his list of wrestlers that always seem to be injured, retired, or on the other side of the world. Uh, so in this one, he brings out his salesman. He brings out the inner salesman, his inner QVC, maybe, uh, but uh, home shopping network. But Big Body has got, man, he's got bats, he's got pillows, he's got some type of cologne. <laughs> Apparently, it doesn't smell that great, according to the interviewer. But, uh, you know, he's been calling for all these people that were injured and everything. And, and who pops up? But Axiom. And Axiom has been cleared. And uh, so you know what that's going to mean. That's going to mean that there's going to be a match later. Uh, so, uh, you know, but Javi, look, the interview, the little promo was was pretty good. You know, Javi's got some skills on the mic, so he will definitely, definitely be okay because uh, we find out later that his in-ring skills are good too. Uh, but they go into a match with Kiana James and Fallon Henry. And uh, look, I got to say, uh, this may be the match of the night. I mean, I, I don't like all the screaming the ah, you know, all that, you know, I, I guess they're teaching that or whatever, but man, this match was pretty freaking good. These girls tore it up or these ladies tore it up, man. It was old school. It was, I mean, it was, uh, you know, a lot of arm bars, a lot of, like I said, the basics earlier, big chops, uh, you know, the one thing that really shocked me in the middle of this great match, I had to go back and watch it twice because I was like, is the ref putting on his gloves in the middle of this match? And he was. He literally, like halfway through the match, he figured out, oh, I don't have my gloves on, so I will put them on. And he continues. <laughs> it's just... uh uh, it was a little odd to me, but, uh, I mean, this match was a really, really good match. Uh, I mean, uh, they beat the crap out of each other. It lasted about the right amount of time. Uh, man, it was a good banger match. A, a you know, go back and check this out, man. I think it's, uh, definitely Miss Henry's, uh, finest match that I've seen her do. And, and Kiana has put on some, some good matches before, of course, but. 
they both, you know, it was really good. Uh, of course, Keon always comes out with that big uh, purse. I'm, I'm sure it's some brand that's very expensive. And it comes into play as a distraction in the match, which causes Miss James to be able to win the match. But as I said, this is a, a definitely good match to go back and watch. And uh, the next promo is they're going about um, clothing. It's uh, Malik Blade, and, uh, of course, Vaughn uh, tore his sweater up that his father gave him uh, uh, back in the day. And he's got Odyssey and Anuffy in there, and they're, you know, he's they're firing him up, and he's saying he's fired up, and they're all fired up. And they're going to go protect the, 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 the legacy of the sweater that was given to him by his father. Uh, so, okay. You know, that's, that's the promo there and, it, and it's okay, you know, but these, uh, these guys are good in the ring. Uh, but, uh, the ladies champs are coming out now with, uh, Nico, uh, Nikita, uh, Lyons and, uh, you know, the, the lady champs come through the crowd and it's their big entrance, you know, and they come in and then of course the lights go down to, uh, uh, Miss Lyons and she comes out and, and everything looks like it's getting ready to go good. And then boom, out of nowhere, Zoe Stark comes in and she lays her out with a Tanya Harding type move and, uh, uh, takes the knee out, uh, jumps up, gets back, you know, like, oops, oops. Uh, I seem to have slipped. And of course, uh, Miss Lyons is, uh, striving in pain. The champs come down to help her up. And when they're taking her backstage, of course, you've got toxic attraction back there <laughs> laughing at them, calling her all kind of names. Uh, and then from there, you know, because who knows if that match is going to happen. So we go back to now the big body Javi against Axiom. And uh, man, this was another, another good match. Uh, big body is, uh, is look, he's got the skills inside. I knew he had flashes of it, but he put it all together. Axiom is Axiom. He is uh, just great. And I love his entrance, the little effects they do to make him look fast. I, <laughs> I really like him. It'd say that's the kid in me. But, uh, you know, uh, Axiom and Big Body put on a great, great match. And, uh, man, uh, Axiom's got a drop kick that is like from out of this world. Uh, I can remember seeing Jeff Jarrett when he was a young kid. He had a sky one, and, and the uh, Kerry Von Erich had a real good one. Axiom gets up there, man. I mean, you almost want to get you know get a hold of the air traffic control because he's up there, uh, and he puts one on big body in this match that just looks picture perfect. Uh, and, you know, it was just a good, good match uh you know and and uh big body goes after you know a body part and he really works on that he tries to take away axiom's leg of course so he can't run and jump around and uh and axiom's gonna pull this off but it is definitely a match to go back and watch for show uh and then they've got him in uh the ladies uh the lady champs uh in uh in in nikita or in the uh training room and the trainer pretty much says that you're cleared <laughs> yeah you're clear uh, it's, it's the kind of their way of doing it and uh you know and and miss Lyon says you know hey that zoe needs to be on the watch and uh that she's ready so they're going to go out and have the match against toxic attraction and you can't do a show without the men's champs pretty deadly and uh of course, they come out and cut a little promo. They got to have some uh, some mic time, and uh, they're going to do a Christmas special next week. Uh, so they're pretty excited about that. It's going to be a pretty deadly Christmas. Uh, so, oh, that's not so bad of a. Uh, that could be a uh, a uh, what in the old days people would call a pay per view. Now, before they get back into the matches, <clears throat> they go. Uh, Go to a little diner in uh, Nowheresville, and uh, where Apollo seems to be hanging out. Uh, been eating a lot of food there and writing a lot of, in his journal. And uh, But this one is a little different, and uh, that's because who shows up? Braun shows up. That's right, the champ shows up. I guess he's tired of seeing these, <laughs> these damn promos, and he's like, hello, 
I'll just come crash it. But he shows up and <clears throat> orders himself a cup of coffee. Uh, and the guys have a good little chat. Uh, and pretty much Apollo saying that everything you are, I am. And uh, Bron saying, yeah, everything you are, I am, but a little bit better. Uh, so, you know, it's a tit for tat kind of little promo, but, uh, um, tastefully done. Braun does a good job. Uh, both are great on the mic. Uh, it's just a little different and, uh, maybe a little breakup is what they needed. Uh, you know, as far as, uh, away from, uh, the studios. So, um, anyway, good little promo, um, uh, <clears throat> in nowheresville, anywhere, USA. Uh, but when they come back, oh, when they come back, it's J.D. McDonough going against Julius Creed. And uh, this match does not disappoint either. Um, this was probably, as on the guy's side, I might say, one, you know, the better match uh, because of all the twists and plots in one match. Uh, that's right. Uh, the ladies' match uh, with Kiana and uh, Miss Henry, I think, was definitely the best uh, the ladies' showing today. And, uh, and this one, oh, J.D., you know, uh, you, the size difference is obvious uh but these guys put on a look back in my days you had a little guy called bill dundee uh the superstar uh but he would make he would be in there with some guys twice his size and he made the match he sold the match sometimes carried the match and jd does not disappoint now julius is just a big old raw hunk of clay he has so much talent uh, man, and he's throwing J.D. And when I say throw, when he does a backdrop, uh, J.D. is up there looking at like the Hubble. Uh, I mean, you know, he's uh, in every move. His belly to bellies are just freaking launching. Uh, you know, Julius is Julius. Uh, you know, you know what you're going to get in this match. But uh, they're going at it. And at one time, J.D., uh, kicks uh, um, uh, Julius out of the out of the ring, so they're outside, and he ends up stretching Julius because he's trying to take away his midsection area, uh, and he stretches him like his back against the turnbuckle. He's on the outside of the ring, and he's got his hands in his mouth and his and his other hands on his on his legs. They're you know literally. Uh, bending him around the pole uh it, you know it just it's a good match but there is an angle because who shows up but veer and sunga and uh they're just watching the match that's all they're doing but of course they're going to uh attract attention and at one point in the match julius recognizes him and and then at one he does a move you know he he does that where he can uh, have you in a suplex, in a you know uh, upright in a suplex, and he can go to one knee. Well, JD makes it look even better because he's kneeing him, trying to get out of it. So it makes it look like he's knocking him down, uh, and he's going to come come out of this move. But <laughs> Julius picks him back up, looks at Viren Sanga, and <clears throat> drops him. Uh, and uh, so uh, Julius does a a kick on on JD, and JD flies out of the ring so at this point he's about to introduce a chair into the match and uh, right about the time that he's up uh, you know julius is up against the turnbuckle uh, out vulnerable he's outside of the ring here comes jd gonna do what he did to Dragonoff and everyone else um and who saves julius but sunga sunga pushes him out of the way but JD's already swinging. You know what that means? <laughs> JD smashes Sanga with the chair. Yeah. And Sanga takes the chair shot, looks around at him, and JD is in disbelief and in utter fear because Veer is now there too. And they let him go. They let him go. And he leaves. Uh, but uh, they go around and they tell Julius they want him at his absolute best. So uh, good twist. The timing on this was freaking fantastic. So uh, that is my banger match of the day, I guess you would say. Uh, they do a, a, 
a little uh, promo with Alba Fire talking about Miss Dawn and, and, you know, that she should have not. Uh, again, I referenced Tug on Superman's cape. Uh, and then uh, after that, they got Dijak leaving the studio. And, uh, and you know, Stax comes up to him. And, you know, Dijak and Stax don't have the first opening very well, but Tony D comes in. And Tony D kind of solves the problem. And they have a little, uh, some words. And, uh, and so uh, they are pretty much on the same page, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see how that goes, but possible collusion with uh, the family and Dijak. Who knows? But uh, from there, it's Von Wagner going against Malik Blade, and he's coming out by himself in this match. Uh, no Odyssey, no Anafi. You know, he's just—it's just him uh, standing up for the sweater. <laughs> and uh, look, he starts off strong. Uh, Malik does, uh, you know, a a pretty good match. You know, of course, Vaughn's going to catch him and Vaughn's going to do what Vaughn does. Uh, And, uh, you know, decent match. Vaughn does a big slam, catches him uh, after a missed frog splash and uh, gets a pin. But then Mr. Stone, that weasel on the outside, you know, suggests to Vaughn, hey, you know, do a little something, something else, you know. So Vaughn goes to... Get ready to do the big slam, and out comes Anuffy when he gets taken out immediately. So uh, now the guys are getting ready to get, both of them are going to get whooped on, but Odyssey Jones comes out, my friends, and Odyssey uh, tears it up. Uh, and uh, so that is setting up, I'm sure, Odyssey Jones coming into the fold here. And, uh, you know, the mellow, or I'm sorry, but HBK had his ladies' side of uh, discussion about all the ladies. And now, at this point in time in the show, they come out and they say who is going to be in the survival match. Uh, and uh, it ends up on the men's side. It's going to be uh, Mello, JD, Mr. Walla, and Joe Gacy. And uh, the mystery uh, fifth opponent or person will be decided in a wild card match. And the same on the ladies' side. It's going to be Zoe and Cora and Kiana and uh, Roxanne. And then the uh, the last one to be decided in a wild card match. Uh, but then we get towards the end here. And uh, what that means is you're going to have this six-woman wo- uh, six tag team match with Toxic Attraction against the Lady Champs. Uh, and Carter and Chance, and is it Miss Lyons? Is she going to be able to make it? Well, she does. She comes out there, and uh, hey, look, uh, the lady champs, uh, you know, uh, uh, Carter and Chance, they really much have the majority of the time in this match. They're flying around. (laughs) You know, I call them the uh, mini uh, Rock and Roll Express there, uh, and no, what, what, let me see, Booker T called uh, Toxic Attraction, the kind of like the New Age Freebirds. Uh, and if you don't know who the Freebirds are, uh, go look them up. One of the best uh, uh, at that time to come out. Uh, but uh, they get into the match, and it is a great, great match. Uh, and uh, they're flying around there. The ladies have really got their moves together. Uh, and, uh, they, they, they show that in this match with their, their combination moves. They, they just, they're great. They are really freaking great. I was not high on this team, um, at at first, but (laughs) man, they really have their teamwork down. Uh, now, of course, of course, the knee of, uh, Miss Lyons is going to come into play because after uh, a time of both the ladies doing what they can, uh, and some great combination moves and uh, by the uh, Toxic Attraction. Uh, double knee on the outside uh, at one point in time pretty much kind of changed, altered the match. And, uh, well, it comes out the way you, you know what's going to happen. Toxic's going to pull off this win. But uh, it is a good win. And at the end, you know, I keep referencing the Muffet box, uh, you know, the little uh, opera uh, uh, box up top. Well, Who's up there when the show goes off the air but Miss Zoe? And Zoe's letting everybody know she ain't done with Miss Lyons. 
So um, that is pretty much the way they wrap it up uh, this week. They're setting up for this uh, for this match, and uh, we now know the participants. So we will see how HBK's creation comes into fluoration. Uh, so, guys, thank you, thank you so much for tuning in this week. And uh, as always, we ask you to spay and neuter, and uh, and and remember. If you can, rescue. Okay. Um, This is Memphis Mark, and you know what? I'm out. for listening to the wwe podcast don't forget to subscribe on your favorite podcast app so you don't miss a show or head to wwepodcast.com and for all of these shows ad free head over to patreon.com slash wwe podcast until then we'll see you next time